Hello and welcome. This is kind of the third of a three-parter in which we've been taking satellites from completed contracts and moving them around to form an effective relay network. Started with a single probe about the moon and continued last episode bringing over a satellite from Kerbin's orbit. In the process, we've gone over a lot of orbital mechanics, which is useful far beyond just playing with relays. But we can't have an effective network without at least three relays, so it's time to meet our third probe. So here we have Junksat 4, and as you can see, Junksat 4 is already in orbit about the moon. But if we take a look at our orbit, we'll notice that it is fairly eccentric. It is not very close to being a circle as well. It is, well, significantly inclined to our target orbit. And remember what our goal here is, is to get this relay into the same orbit as our other two relays but also to position it so that all three of these relays will be equally spaced around this orbit. So we're going to need to get it in roughly about this position right here. So we're going to need to do a number of different tricks in order to do that. But the first thing we're going to want to deal with is fixing the inclination. And what that means is getting these two orbits to be in the same plane. And we're going to do that by doing a normal burn. Now, when it comes to doing these inclination changes, where you do it makes a big difference as to how much it's going to cost you to do. And the thing to remember most is the slower you're going, the cheaper that plane change is going to be. And we are going the most slowly when we're out here towards Apoapsis as far away from the parent body as we can be. In fact, if you get into the math of it, you can often run into situations where it's actually to your advantage to burn and push that Apoapsis even further out and do the plane change and then burn to get back to where you were before. Actually turns out to be cheaper combining all those burns than simply uh, doing one single inclination change. I have videos that get into the math of all that if you want to look into it. But my instincts here say that this orbit actually is pretty far out from the moon as it is. I don't think I need to push it out any further than it already is. I'm going to do the plane change right away. Now, if we were to do the exact plane change, well, if we take one of these satellites and we select it as a target, we get this uh, ascending node and descending node and they tell you a couple of things number one is they tell you how far the two planes are uh, the angle between them and these two planes are inclined at an angle of 23.9 degrees and the other thing they tell you is where the planes of the two orbits cross it is at the ascending or descending node that you want to make this plane change Again, keeping in mind that the further out you are from the parent body, the cheaper that burn is going to be. So pretty much that's going to be here, the ascending node. We can see we have to do the burn here. So we're going to put a maneuver here. And what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a normal burn. That's these two purpley ones here. Now, let's say we're going around in this direction. So we're coming down as we go from right to left across the screen here. We need to pull this part of our trajectory upward. So that means we need to be pulling in this direction like that. That's the anti-normal vector. Now, as I do this, one thing to notice is, yes, I am bringing down that relative inclination. It's now down to 3.4 degrees, but I'm also messing up my periapsis. See how that periapsis is being pushed outwards from where it was before? Sometimes you're going to have to pay attention to that because if you want to keep your periapsis the same, you're going to have to counter the normal burn with a little bit of retrograde burn. But we're not concerned about keeping this periapsis the same because eventually we want this periapsis to come out and just touch our target orbit. So we do actually want this periapsis to come out. So the fact that it's coming out is actually perfectly fine. That's working to our favor. If it gets to the point where the periapsis actually extends past our target orbit, we might have to do something about it. But let's see if that's going to happen. So let's see, our relative inclination is down, down to 3.4. We'll keep pulling in this direction. Oh, it's 0.7. Let's switch over to our little widgety thing down here and let's see we are burning anti-normal that's 0 0.6 0 0.4 0 0.2 0.0 all right so now the planes of these two orbits are going to be in the same spot 
after we do this burn and I can see that my periapsis of the regarding trajectory is still below my target orbit so we don't need to do any kind of correction we're gonna just do this burn as we see it right here all right well let's get to it this is a 24 second burn this is actually going to be the biggest burn of this whole process inclination changes are expensive here we go and unfortunately we're going to have to watch it from out here because I need to keep track of this relative inclination angle and uh, there's it does we don't get that information down here with our orbital data which is kind of unfortunate so I'm gonna let this burn get down fairly low and we're going to cut the throttle we're going to get rid of the burn even though I've not quite finished it yet and I can see I still have point 0.1 off and so what I'm gonna do is just leave this where it is and I'm just going to give a little bit more until we get zeros is it zero kind of went off the screen there it is 0, 0.0 so now the planes of our two orbits are the same um uh, next step the next step in all of this well is to get as mentioned our periapsis to just be touching our target orbit and our cheapest place to do that let's get rid of the 0, 0.0 we don't have to worry about that anymore is out here towards apoapsis at the other end of our orbit this is going to be a very very small burn I can see that I'm just gonna push this outwards and you can actually watch these close encounter indicators as you do this um, they will just come to this same point when you're at the right spot they'll come to periapsis right when you're in the right spot in fact I'm gonna give let's just turn this down and do it this way there we go yeah see how that when you get it right so it's right on there that's how you know that is in the right place and again it, what's interesting is it looks like these two are really close to each other like we're going for a rendezvous we certainly are not that is just a coincidence that it worked out this way right now I actually don't care how far I am away from my target satellite that's gonna be fixed in just a little bit very small burn bringing up that periapsis I'm gonna do the same trick where I sit there and I'm gonna cut the burn a little early boom like that still half a meter per second left in the burn we're gonna cut this and we're gonna notice where our close encounter indicators are and then we're just gonna push it just a little further till they just come together there at periapsis and again there's no rush you can take your time Boop. there we go so now we got our periapsis just in the right place. All right, so left to its own devices, we're actually gonna come down here, come very close to a rendezvous. But of course, let's select the moon as a target here. We're not interested in a rendezvous. We're interested in placing ourselves so that we are exactly halfway between these two satellites and halfway between not this halfway but this halfway and it kind of looks like by the time we get down here that's going to be about the right spot but don't forget these guys are moving as well so we're going to select one of them as a target doesn't matter which one in fact I'll select the other one just to show you that it doesn't matter which one and what we're going to do is we're going to put a maneuver here at periapsis and what we want to do is adjust our we're going to give ourselves a little bit of retrograde and notice how this encounter indicator is moving and don't forget what we want is we want the angle between this close encounter indicator and this close encounter indicator to be 120 degrees which is one third of a full orbit now we got to be a little bit careful this is our target if I'm 120 degrees behind this target see which way yeah we're going around this way <laughs> if I'm 120 degrees behind this target I'll actually end up right on top of this target so I need to be 120 degrees ahead of this target this indicator here is telling me where the target is this indicator is telling me where we're going to be when we've come around and done one more complete orbit after this burn I need this indicator to be 120 degrees ahead of this indicator so let's see if I can do this I don't think I'm gonna make no I'm not I'm gonna have to go the other way <laughs> you can see that and again for now I'm just going to be eyeballing this this angle here needs to be 120 degrees I think I can give myself a little bit more this way 
again. So it's about a third of a circle between here and here. That that angle there is about a third of the entire orbit. That feels about right. Don't forget we can tweak this and make it nicer once we've got our rough approximation. But to me, this is looking pretty good. And you can see it's only a teeny tiny 2.8 meter per second burn. Let's do it. Here we go. Let's go to half throttle again because it's so small. I'm going to use the same trick once again. I'm going to cut it at about half a meter per second left. We're going to get rid of the node. Keep this oriented the way it is. We're going to take a look at our close encounter indicators. Um, I think they're kind of close enough to being close to 120. Remember, we kind of just eyeballed this anyway. So... Next step in all of this, well, we're going to do one complete orbit, and hopefully, if we have this all planned out right, notice we're almost on top of one of our relays here, but if this is all planned out right, by the time we come around one more orbit, we should end up halfway between the two. Let's see how this works out. So remember again that the satellites that are in the circular orbit that we're aiming for are going up pretty close to a constant velocity. However, we're going to be taking longer because we're in this higher orbit and hopefully it looks like we got this timed out right. Excellent. And again, don't forget, you can actually measure your phase angle, making sure you got this as a target. It actually is here telling us our phase angle. So we're going to get a very good idea of how close we're going to come. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's see. How far are we from periapsis? We're a few minutes away from periapsis, but I can see here, 114 degrees, we're about six degrees off. We'll tweak that in just a little bit, but first what we want to do is get ourselves into this final orbit. So again, we're gonna put our maneuver node right here at periapsis, we're gonna be burning retrograde. But what's important about this orbit is not so much getting the apoapsis and periapsis exactly where you wanna be, we're going to select here on our orbital info. It's the period that's important. And again, just to remind people, these guys are in an orbit with a period of exactly three hours. So I would like our new satellite to have a period of exactly three hours. So let's uh, keep going with what we're doing here. We'll pull this a little further, watch in that period. Oh, that's pretty darn close. We'll switch to using the widget here. You can see I need to bring the scale down as low as it'll go. Five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Three hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds, provided I can do this 28.7 meter per second burn. Well, again, why don't we do that? And again, what I'm really watching more than the burn indicator is that period. We slow down. Whoa, I'm five seconds off. Got it just in time. Let's really turn down that thrust. Four. Three. Two. <laughs> one. And zero. All right. So we're now in an orbit of a period of three hours, which was our target. If we take a look at our approach information, we are at about 115 degrees phase. We're about five degrees off. As far as the functionality goes of this network, the five degrees off is not going to affect anything. It's going to function absolutely fine, but if you're as perfinicky about this kind of stuff as I am, you're probably going to want to change that. So let's reset this as our, let's, let's see, that's junk set four. Where is, there's moon relay number two. Can you go to moon relay number one, two, or moon relay number one? Doesn't matter. Let's go to moon relay number one this time. Switching, we're switching back and forth. <laughs> so we're going to set that as a target. We've changed, and let's get rid of these communication lines that are just confusing the situation here. And if we take a look at our phase angle, because I shifted from this one to this one, our phase angle is now 124.8 degrees. Again, I would love that to be 120 degrees. That means this angle here between the, our satellite and this satellite is too big. We need it to be smaller, which means we need to speed up and catch up, and again, Due to the wonderfulness of orbital mechanics to speed up, you burn retrograde. Yep, yeah, because that will reduce our orbit, which will reduce our period, which will get us to go around the moon 
more quickly. Again, it's pretty easy to do a little bit of very rough mathematics to help you decide how much you need to bring your period down by. And again, we did this last episode. What you do is you take a look at your uh, inclination. We want to increase this by 5.2 degrees. That's 5.2 degrees out of an entire circle of 360 degrees. So you take 5.2, divide that by 360. Then you look at your target orbit, which is three hours. Three hours is about 10,800 seconds, so we need to take 10,800 seconds, multiply it by the fraction we got, and what we end up with is we need to decrease our period by 156 seconds, which is the same as 2 minutes and 36 seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on our orbital info, we're going to put ourselves onto the retrograde vector, and we want to make this 2 minutes and 36 seconds less, so that's going to make it 2 hours, 57 minutes, and 24 seconds. And again, you can take your time. It's the wonderful thing about all this tweaking stuff is none of it's in a rush. And 24 seconds. There we go. All right. And again, what we want to watch is our phase angle. Keep in mind, this doesn't work out precisely. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to time warp. And what we should be noticing is this phase angle. It's starting to increase right now as we are speeding up towards periapsis. But we should, after doing approximately an orbit, notice that it's going to come down there. And it's coming down now. Let's slow down a little bit. It's coming down to, we want it 120 degrees. And right about there. Okay, we're at 120 degrees now. Now we want our period to be back to being three hours again. So for that, we're going to burn in a prograde direction. Seven, eight, nine, zero. Beautiful. Okay, so now our period's back to being what we want, the three hours. If we take a look, at our phase angle, our phase angle is 120 degrees. So we now have a nice situation where we actually are. We can put these lines back on again. We've created this nice equilateral triangle, which again was our target. If you want to, again, this is going to maintain itself perfectly fine for an extended period of time, but if you want to be really finicky about your orbits, and I know I am quite often, we can do even a little bit better. Let's unselect our target. I think it was moon relay number one. Yep, that's right. And we can see that our blue orbit is a little bit eccentric, right? The apoapsis is 386 while kilometers while our periapsis is 369 kilometers if we round it off not super great but we can fix that by simply burning in a radial direction we are going around this in the well nope we're going around in this direction <laughs> it's so hard to keep track of this because we're going around backwards so we're coming up towards our apoapsis we would like to bring this part of the trajectory the part of the trajectory that's ahead of us downwards so to do that we're going to burn radially towards the moon in this direction right here again burning radially will bring your apoapsis down while bringing the periapsis up but leaving the period alone so let's start doing that you can see our apoapsis going down we can see our periapsis going up and increase throttle even more but as I'm doing this I'm also pulling that apoapsis towards me so you'll get to a point where you're gonna have to stop yeah let's let's cut this you can see our apoapsis is starting to come close to where we're at we're still a little bit off but notice our period is still at three hours zero minutes and zero seconds uh, so what we can do if we want to keep going with this is we can be happy with what we got or we can time warp to the point where we are halfway between our apoapsis and periapsis, which is us. Oh, I'm losing track of who we are. There we are. I actually lost track of our relay there. I was watching the wrong one. <laughs> 
And again, here's us here. Our apoapsis is coming up ahead of us. We're going to burn radially down towards the planet to keep doing the same thing. Here we go. Again, bringing our apoapsis down while bringing... Whoa, they just swapped. That's always a sign that we are very, very close. In fact, I think I'm pretty happy with where they are. Our final phase angle, if we pick one of these satellites and set it as a target, we can take a look at our final phase angle. Our final phase angle is off because of our moving around a little bit. Again, it's only off now by 2.3 degrees. If you want to, you can keep repeating this process. In fact, why don't we do exactly that? So once again, to change your phase angle, what you want to do is change the period of your orbit by burning either prograde or retrograde. In this case, because my phase angle is actually a little bit too big, I need to catch up to the satellite that's ahead of me. So I need to reduce my period by burning a bit retrograde. Then once you get your phase angle where you want it to be, you bring your period back up to that target three hours. Then if you want to fix your eccentricity, you burn radially, either straight towards the parent body or straight away from the parent body. In this particular case, I'm actually burning away from the moon because the periapsis is what's ahead of me in the orbit, so I need to bring that periapsis up. And remember, there's no rush with any of this. You can take your time tweaking your orbit well as long as you have fuel to do so. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to welcome aboard my newest patron, Brooks Van Pelt. Thank you very much, Brooks, for your support. And thank you to all of my patrons whose support continue to inspire me to keep these videos coming out on a regular basis. But right now, why don't we put those communication lines back on? We've made this nice equilateral triangle. We've taken these junky satellites that were all here for other purposes and put them all together into a perfectly functioning relay network. If you're noticing these red lines here, I hope they're not bothering you. You're like, why do we get such poor communication? Well, actually, that is uh, this right here, Adam Scrap. He's a, a rescue contract that I have. He doesn't have an antenna aboard, and so that's why his communication strength just stinks. <laughs> So he's not part of our network. Try to ignore that. You can see we're communicating very, very well with something down here on the surface, though. Functional network. And these tricks of how to use normal burns, how to use radial burns, how to affect your period and your phase angle and your eccentricity, all are very, very useful skills, not just for putting in relays, but for basically getting probes and spacecrafts anywhere it is that you want them to be. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. I hope you found it useful. And as always, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.